Hi you guys, it's Miss Neal from Chennai Athenaeum, and I am so glad to be given this opportunity to speak with you all today about communication. How we did it in the past and how we do it today. I really miss you all. Are you ready? How do you like to keep in touch with your friends and family? Right now, things have changed quite a bit. We're used to seeing our friends at school and maybe even seeing relatives who live nearby all the time. But now, at least for a little while, we have to rely on technology for most of our communication. I know I'm thankful for technology we have now because it's allowing me to talk to all of you. But long ago, before technology gave us the ability to interact on a computer screen, friends and loved ones still found ways to communicate. Do you know who John Adams was? He was the second president of the United States, and he played a very important role in leading America in her quest for independence from the Great Britain. He grew up on a farm and later became a lawyer. He knew deep in his heart that America should be free, and he was a man who was not afraid to speak his mind. He gave speeches that inspired and changed the minds of fellow patriots. He was a man who loved words. But one can hardly mention John Adams without also mentioning his wife, Abigail. John and Abigail loved each other very much and had the same dream of independence for the colonies. Because they shared the same dream, they had to spend many, many, many days and months apart from each other while John went back and forth to Philadelphia and even across the ocean to Europe to gain independence. And they didn't have an iPad or a phone with any way to call and say hello. What do you suppose they did? If you were thinking letters, you're right. They wrote over a thousand letters to each other throughout their lifetime. Did you hear that? A thousand letters. But that was the only way that they can communicate then. Their letters became some of the most famous in the world, and they're still read by people today. Abigail was John's strength. When he had to stand up for what was right, even when it wasn't popular, her letters offered him kindness and support, and it showed how much he trusted her and her opinion and her advice. One of Abigail's letters read, Great necessities call out great virtues. When a mind is raised and animated by the scenes that engage the heart, then those qualities, which would otherwise lay dormant, wake into life and form the character of the hero and the statesman. John wrote back saying, Human nature, with all of its infirmities and deprivation, is still capable of great things. It is capable of attaining to degrees of wisdom and goodness, the virtues and powers to which may be trained by early education and constant discipline are truly sublime and astonishing. Well, letters can be a wonderful way to share your thoughts and ideas with someone that you love and trust and they can be read over and over again. We call someone we share letters with a pen pal. Do you have a pen pal? And would you like one? If I was your pen pal, this is what I would say to you today. My dearest friend. That's how Abigail wrote her letters to John. I'm very glad I'm speaking with you today. I miss you very much. I'm staying healthy and safe, and I hope you are too. I've done boats loads of cleanings and lots of painting projects. I am very tired of being in this house, but I'm glad that we're all safe. On exciting news though, I'm getting a puppy. I cannot wait to hear from you, Miss Neal. If you would like to send me a letter, you can ask your parent to mail it to the school. I would love to hear from you. Letter writers of old would write on pretty stationery. So, when you decide who you're going to write to, perhaps take some time into the design so that your paper looks extra special. Whoever is receiving it will enjoy your artwork and creativity. So here are a few examples. This first one is it's a blue piece of paper with flowers bordering it. And then the next one is a beige kind of tan color and all around it is borders. And even in the middle, it has the word the. I'm going to show you guys an idea on how to make your letter special. You're only going to need a few supplies though. The first being a paper towel. Whatever area you're going to be working on, you want to make sure that you're keeping it protected and you don't want to ruin it with the marker's ink. 
My area that I'm working on is the wall. We're gonna pretend that it's a whiteboard because it's really hard to do the art craft on a table where you guys won't be able to see it. Next, you will need a piece of paper. I already have my paper taped up here because it's really convenient for me. The thicker the paper, the better, but if you don't have thick paper, that's fine. You can use regular copy paper. The next thing that you're going to need are markers and a spray bottle. If you don't have a spray bottle, that's fine. I'm just using a glass of water and a paintbrush. So I'm going to show you guys today how I made my letter. And of course I dropped it. I love air balloons, so I turned it into an air balloon and I wrote my letter inside of it. You guys can get really creative with this. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to watercolor with just markers. So, what you're going to need is a plastic Ziploc bag. The smaller it is, the easier it is to work with. But if you're doing a really big masterpiece, you could use a bigger size. The next step that you're going to do is choose your markers. You don't have to use three, I use three. You can use as many as you want. And when you're drawing it on the plastic bag, you don't want to draw designs because it's going to get water on it and it's going to spread out like watercolor. So what you really want to do is just kind of squiggle your lines. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to tell you guys about a pen pal that I used to have. When around summertime, I would go to Georgia that's where my mom's side of the family is at. And my grandma's neighbor was my best friend. And we would write letters to each other all the time. And I still have those letters today. They're in my memory box and I can read them over and over again. All right. So we have our plastic bag filled with color. It's kind of hard to see. Let me get it. See how it doesn't really matter how you lay it on there or where you put it. It's all going to change. If you have a spray bottle, go ahead and spray the, the bag down. Be careful with how much water you put on it. But if you don't have a spray bottle, go ahead and use your glass of water. Dip your fingers in and just sprinkle it on. It's easier on a flat surface because the color is already running, but that's okay. You guys will be working on a flat surface. Just going to keep on spurting some water on that. And when I think it's all ready, you have two choices. You can use your fingers if your markers are washable and you can blend those colors together. Or you can use a paintbrush. I'm going to blend the green into the blue. And then I'm going to dip my paintbrush again to get rid of the color. And then I'm going to blend the purple into the blue. After you have your colors mixed together, you're going to want to flip it over and put it on your piece of paper. And then just spread it like crazy. Move it around, manipulate the water. And then once you're done with the results, you can peel back your paper. I know it's hard to see over there, so I'm going to take this off for you guys so you can see it. And this is what it looks like. You have your purple going to your blue to your green. If you don't like the results of this, you can always go back to it, put more ink on it, wet it down again, flip it over, and do the process again. Again, please be mindful of how much water you are putting on your piece of paper. You don't want to tear it. Once it's fully dry, then you're able to write your letter and do a little bit of designs. If you see on this piece of paper, I did the outline of my hot balloon first, and then I did the water and it spread all the ink. So do this step first, let it dry completely, draw your little designs, and then you can write your letter to whoever you want to. It was nice talking to you.